Hey everyone, I wanted to make a video about making gears from scratch. Making gears has been on the bucket list for a very long time, and I've finally been able to buy the tools and cutters to be able to do it. A big motivator in actually getting around to doing this are these gears. If you're familiar with the mini lathe, you'll know that the power feed lead screw is driven through a gear train that is powered by the spindle. And when you're cutting harder materials, such as steel, there can be a lot of force going through those plastic acetal gears. Incidentally, that's not how I broke this gear. I cracked this gear trying to get the banjo properly aligned so that the gear train would properly mesh. 100% my fault, but that probably wouldn't happen if I just opted and bought metal gears. Now I can go and buy a replacement 35 tooth module 1 gear on eBay for about $10. A full set of replacement gears, which are very common, would set me back around about $60. So that's about $6 a gear. That's a factory made steel gear with a keyway already cut. I think that's pretty reasonable. So I went ahead and bought myself a set of gear cutters. Even at import prices, this was pretty expensive. For a set of 8 gear cutters, it was about $100. Visually speaking, they look to be very nicely made. They're made of M2 high speed steel, so they should be able to cut almost anything, and these zero rate cutting faces mean they should be pretty easy to resharpen on a diamond stone. With gear cutters like this, there are 8 cutters in a set, and each cutter will cut a range of gears, depending on the tooth count. I've drawn up a comparison in SolidWorks, and you'll notice that the shape of a gear's tooth changes depending on the size of the gear itself. As a result, you'll need to cut a different gear tooth profile, depending on how many gear teeth are on the gear that you're making. I'm holding all of the cutters next to each other, and you may notice how the cutter profile changes from one tooth to another. I need to cut a 35 tooth gear, so I'll be using the number 6 cutter. I'll talk a bit more at the end, but for anyone else that wants to replace their mini lathe gears, the mini lathes use module 1 gears, and you'll need module 1 cutters. Now to use the cutters, I'll need to quickly machine up an arbor. I'll be trying out some cold rolled 12L14 steel. It's about 0.3% lead. It should be a lot easier and nicer to machine than the mild steel that I've been using in the past. I'll start off with the left hand tool and I'll clean up the ends. Next I'll machine the end that will get clamped in the collar. I wasn't getting much progress with high speed steel, so I switched over to a carbide insert and the cut immediately improved. And I have to say, the steel is really nice to work with. I'm getting a good surface finish, and I'm getting really good chips. I'm looking to hit about 18mm on the shaft diameter, plus zero, and minus about a thou. And the micrometers say that's just on the limit. I'm going to swap out the scroll chuck for an independent four-jaw chuck, but first I'll machine the unmachined section. 
unless it's turned prior, there's no guarantee that the stock is perfectly cylindrical from the factory, and I really need it to be cylindrical because I will be dialing the part in using a test indicator. I'll now machine the shaft for the cutter to push onto, and that has to be as close to 25mm as I can get it. From another piece of stock, I'll machine in an end cap to clamp the cutter onto the arbor. A quick test shows that the parts fit really nice together. The final thing left to do is cut a 6mm key slot. And that fits really nicely. I don't have any keyway steel, so I filed down some mild steel and that should do until it arrives. A quick test shows that there is a bit of run out, though it's mainly down to a bad collet. I'm going to replace it soon, so it shouldn't be something to worry about. The last thing that I need is a way to rotate the gear so the cutter can cut it in 35 equal increments, or about 10.3 degrees each time. And that's where this comes in. This is a dividing head. In all, I paid about 200 US for it, or about 300 Australian, for this and the 5 inch chuck. Essentially, it's just a chuck on a shaft that's connected to a 40 to 1 worm gear. Every time I spin the hand wheel, the chuck will rotate 1 40th of a complete turn. And as I'll demonstrate later, use these dividing plates to accurately rotate the head a certain amount, and what plate and hole number you use is detailed on many available charts. I'll go and set it up on the mill, cut out a gear blank and an arbor, and we'll cut this gear. I'll be cutting the blank from an old cutoff of aluminium. This was my first time using the dividing head and the gear cutters, so I'm sticking with aluminium, which I can always replace. I don't have a reamer on hand, so I'll bore the hole to size. I'll be making the arbor from some free machining aluminium, and it really is a lot nicer to use than the old 6061 that I've been using. I have the arbor and gear blank loaded in the dividing head. According to the chart that I have, I'll need to use the 49 hole plate. A 
According to the chart, for a 35 tooth division, I'll have to do one complete turn plus an extra seven holes. I'll set up the sector arms to have eight holes. So that's the one that I'll already be in plus a further seven. So to get a 135th turn, I'll need to do one full spin of the hand wheel followed by seven more holes. The sector arms just help keep track of how many holes to move. Well, let's give it a go and see if it works. Well, that wasn't exactly quick, but we got there in the end. Normally you might face and chamfer the gear, though I'm just going to take the burrs off using some sandpaper, and that should be good enough. Well, that looks to me like a gear. It even meshes with one. The real question is, does it work in a gear train? Well, that looks pretty good to me. One final thing that I'll mention is, if you're going to try this, make sure you get the correct gear size. Everything I use tends to be metric, and as a result, I use module gears, which is the most common gear if you're using metric. But there are various sizes in the module gear system. The gears in the lathe headstock, for example, are module 2, and they obviously don't mesh with the module 1 gears. And of course, if you're in North America, you might instead be using diametral pitch gears, sort of the metric imperial sort of thing. And to no surprise, diametral pitch and module gears don't work with each other. Overall, I set out with the goal to make my own gears, and it looks like I did. They work really nicely. As long as I now make at least 80 or so gears, I can go to sleep at night knowing that I saved money making my own gears, rather than paying money for some reasonably priced ones. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching, hope you learned something, and uh, see you next time.